clap your hands unto the Lord you're in the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah to Hallelujah to the King. Rams, rams, rams and worship. There's a way to tap into the spirit. Oh, uh, it comes through worship. Hallelujah, but there's a process that you need to go through. I recommend the pattern of the tabernacle. This is one thing can't keep uh, stop speaking about because if you really want to go into the holies, if you really want to tap into God, there is a pattern that we need to follow. Uh, we can't indeed, we can't uh, walk past the gate. We need to go through that gate. Neither can we bypass the brazen halter. We have to stop off that brazen halter. Uh, sometimes we have to drag ourselves up that altar, uh, screaming and kicking, but we self need to die. Uh, after the death, then came the love, or there's a washing of the word. Uh, yes, 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 there's a washing of the word. After that, the outer courts, then you step into the holy place. In the holy place, there is a table of showbread, the seven candlesticks, and the halt of incense. Uh, this is how you tap into the holies of holies. If you bypass the halter, you will never step into the holies of holies. You can't bypass the brazen halter, neither can you bypass the lava. Uh, you won't be able to bypass the holy place before you step into the holies of holies. We give God the glory and all the praise. There is no God like him and there will never be another God like him. He's God all by himself. Uh, there is no God beside him. He is God all by himself. Oh, I think you need to stand in his presence. Shaka Baseteke. Uh, there are some people who didn't make it today. Uh, they went to bed and didn't uh, wake in the morning, but I am alive today only because he made a way. Not because of who I am, but because of who he is, his, his grace and his mercies. That's the reason why I'm standing here. Uh, some of us might not have the opportunity to come back into a, a place such as this. So when we get the opportunity, we make the most of it. I'm sweating, but you can forget about the heat. And reach out and say, God, here I am to worship. I just left everything at the brazen altar. I left everything at the altar of incense. Here I am now stepping into the holies of holies. Uh, speak to my spirit. Speak to my soul. Indeed, speak to my body. Uh, speak to my circumstance. Speak to my situation. Speak to my relatives. Speak to this government. Speak to this nation. Speak to the schools. Uh, speak to the leaders. Speak to those who are in charge. Speak to the young people. Uh, speak to the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. Our uh, Lord, your word said you wish that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Call us out of sin. Hallelujah to God. Bless his holy name. You may be seated. Don't think I'll be very um, long, but I give God the glory. to try and keep an eye on on the time uh, so greetings to uh, Bishop and Lady Ellis and Minister Greenaway hallelujah to God uh, Minister Michael all the leaders and ministers of this great assembly which have had the the privilege and the honor to have learned so much uh, caused a certain level of growth, indeed so much insight. So it's an honor for me uh, to stand before this great body of people 
even to pull a scripture, even to read a scripture. And even more importantly, it's even an honor even to say something about Jesus. I recognize that it's not of anything that I do is not because of any, uh, I always say works of righteousness, it's not anything like that. But his grace, I remember that thief in the night, uh, that thief on the cross. Uh, and God said to him, he, uh, the thief said to Jesus, remember me. And he said he will remember him in glory. You know, even if I have to be like that thief in the night, probably I'm even lower than that thief. I'm the one who should have been on the cross. Uh, yes, I should have been on the cross when I look back on my life and when I'm looking at the, what I've done and, my, and so on and so forth, I should have been the one nailed. But the Bible speaks about an intercessor. And so when God is looking at me, he's looking at me through the intercessor. And the intercessor is the man Christ Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. It, it is Jesus, that's why I'm here. It's Jesus, that's why I'm alive. It's Jesus, that's why I have health and strength. It's Jesus, that's why I'm able to speak. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's because of his grace and his mercies. I give him all the glory and all the praise. Really turn with me to the book of Romans. This is a very familiar scripture. And um, I think some time ago, probably did an exhortation about on what I'm going to speak about. Uh, but I just feel like touching this one again. Um, uh, thanks, uh, thank you, Pastor, Pastor Sidney. Praise his own name. Uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, minister this morning at, uh, at our church. I was wondering, how am I going to survive uh, for this one? We don't rely, rely on our strength. It doesn't really matter. God will give you a word one way or the other. So we give him glory and we give him praise. It's Romans 8, and I'm reading from 26 to uh, 28, and it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth this art knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god verse 28 and we know that all things uh not some things not uh a few things but all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah to God. All things work together for good. I'm going to use as a team, are you a candidate? Are you a candidate? I'm going to ask Bishop Ellis just to pray for a blessing over this word in Jesus' name. about to say amen. amen amen don't think i will be very long it's a very short exhortation probably um but uh, last week um saturday i had the opportunity to attend um the ordination of a bishop from another assembly himself and wife had been serving as ministers as pastors senior pastors and so on um, acting in that role as a bishop uh, for 18 years. Indeed, he has been in the ministry even bef long before that. Uh, but I'm sure if I ask him what was his testimony, likewise, if you ask Bishop Ellis what was his testimony, uh, both would have, seen, uh, would have said something very similar. They would have said at some point in the journey, on this journey, on this road, uh, they were troubled on every side. 
they would have said sometimes they were perplexed. There were times as well when they were persecuted at various levels. They would have said at some point they, was, they were cast down. But even then, they would tell you that through it all, they have learned to trust in Jesus. They would have said, I believe that through it all, they have learned to depend upon his word. However, it's not just uh, troubles and challenges, but I'm sure they will say as well, they were breakthroughs. Uh, I'm sure they will say there were many victories. I'm sure they will say as well, on this journey, there were uh, rewards. And the question which I'm asking you and asking me as I'm feeling and sensing that the Spirit is asking is, are you a candidate? Are you a candidate? This song came to me. The songwriter says this. He says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, oh, please don't do it without me. He says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, and he's begging here, he says, Lord, please don't do it without me. He says, if you're healing in this season, don't do it without me. If you're blessing in this season, please don't do it without me. And so I ask the question a second time as I'm asking myself, are you a candidate? Uh, some time ago, we had the privilege, and um, it was online, uh, teaching about the five uh, levels of sonship. And some of us would have heard it, probably some didn't had the opportunity to tune into that teaching. But I have some notes from it. I'm not going to go into any details, but I'm going to touch it a bit. And the preacher, he said at the time that the first level, I believe he said it was uh, uh, Nepios, Nepios, Nepios. And this is in the Greek now. And so Nepios is but like a child. Then he spoke about the next level, and he was stepping into the next level as a paidon. Paidon, yes, is still a child, but there is a, a more mature level than the Napius. I believe he mentioned, I was trying to do some research myself, he mentioned uh, uh, where the, the, the paidon is concerned. Uh, this, this, this child, the son of God, is now entering uh, into an experience with the father. But then you, he stepped into another level and he spoke about the technon. Where the technon is concerned, uh, uh, this, this individual now starts to live a life of, 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 of overcoming sin, growing in love, and submitting the will. I'm headed somewhere. Then he spoke about the fourth level. Uh, I think it's Neoniscus. Yes, the Neoniscus. This individual now as a son of God uh, start to be consistent in their spiritual uh, strength, having the word dwelling in them, learning how to serve the ministry. But then he spoke about the fifth level. And the fifth level is the Uyos. Uh, Uyos. Now at the Uyos level, this is a mature son. A fully mature son. This individual will be led by the spirit. They'll be submissive and obedient. Excel in peace, love, and forgiveness. Not, not offended. Uh, not just, I, I, when I checked the Greek on this one, it didn't say that this person wasn't easily offended. But the word said, the, 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 the meaning said, this person wasn't uh, offended from discipline. Not, in other words, if discipline is coming, they are not offended. Not an not a issue of easily offended. They are just not offended. And when I read that, I remember when they were stoning Stephen to death. 
Oh, yes, they were stoning Stephen to death. The Bible says he wasn't even screaming out for his life. He wasn't even saying, Lord, why is it am I going through this experience? I have served you, I have ministered to so many people, so many have come and accepted you as, as Lord and Savior. Uh, he wasn't complaining, he wasn't asking God for none of that. But instead, the Bible says when he looked up into the realm of the Spirit, he was seeing the heavens open. And instead of cursing those who were stoning him, he was asking God to bless those who are stoning him. Uh, this is a level of sonship that we need to step into. Oh God, it's that level of sonship whereby God can truly use you. There is a, there is a, there is a, a, a revival that is, that is eating. We are, in fact, we are in a revival right now. There is a revival that is eating this nation. But I'm sensing that the ones that God will truly use are the Uyas. Those who God uh, who are, who are sons who are fully matured. You see, because God can't afford to use some of us to do certain things. Because we will then try to take the glory. But the glory does not belong to us. The glory belongs to God. And so when we recognize that we are servants of the king, when we recognize we can do nothing outside of God, when we recognize that we are insignificant, it's by the grace of God that we are able to do anything. Uh, even as I prophesy, it's by the grace of God that I prophesy. And if I should uh, be foolish enough to think that is because of my abilities because of who I am oh it's not because of who I am but it's because of who he is I just need a thank you very much hallelujah to God Hallelujah to God. Not because of who I am, I am, but because of who he is. The purpose of quoting those five sonship is, is for us to recognize the levels in which we need to grow. When we come to Christ, we go through a process. A process of maturity, a process of growth. I'm watching the time. A process of growth. But the objective is to ultimately be the son uh, uh, who God can use. A mature son, a fully mature son in Christ. You know, one of the most uncomfortable topic for any preacher, and 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 uh, for any preacher, is the topic of the cross. I'm not talking about the cross that Jesus Christ was nailed to. I'm talking about the cross that all of us needs to be nailed to. Luke chapter nine verse twenty three states this: Jesus says, "If any man will come after me." Let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. Oh, oftentimes I read that scripture. And I heard and I read, uh, take up his cross and follow. And I missed the section that says daily. Oh, he didn't say Monday, take up your cross. Tuesday, take up your cross. Forget it on Wednesday. Take it back up on Thursday. Take it on Friday. Take it on Saturday. No, every day we need to go to God with that cross. We need to take that cross up. We need to deny ourselves and take up that cross up. What are we doing? We're killing the influence of self so the influence of God can take preeminence in our lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take this off. I'm So I looked up the word uh, deny in the Greek. And, it's, and it, the word I saw was aparneomai. Apar, apar and aparneomai apar means to have no acquaintance. Jesus Christ is saying don't have, have no acquaintance with self. This is levels. Uh, it says no, con not even connection, no connection, no acquaintance, no connection. This is talking about deny. 
uh, in fact, when we read the King James Version, for example, we know it's in English, but the root word is not English, it's in the Greek. And here's the Greek interpretation about the night. It says, have no connection. Uh, there was a second meaning, it said, forget oneself, lose sight of word of one's own interest. Oh God, the ninth self. So the question is, I'm asking myself and I'm asking you again, are you a candidate? Uh, some time ago, I remember listening to this one from Dr. S.M. Lockridge. And S. Dr. Lockridge says this. He said that God is a seven-way king. He said he wasn't born, he was born a king. In other words, he didn't have to wait for somebody to die for him to become a king. Uh, he said that he is the king of the Jews, the racial king. He said that he is the king of Israel, the national king. He said he is the king of righteousness, the king of the ages, the king of the heavens. He is the king of glory. He is the king of kings. And he's the Lords of Lords. David says the heavens declare and the glory of God and the firmament show it is and the work. That is who we serve. I was listening even more and, and, and I said uh, he was speaking some stuff here. He says he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. Is the supreme problem in higher criticism. Is the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He said is the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. The miracle of your age. The miracle of my age. The miracle of their age. And may I had the miracle of any age. And I'm closing what is I'm closing off his remarks with these statements. He said he is indescribable, incomprehensible, invincible, irresistible. Can't get him out of your mind. You can't even wash him off your hands. When they were killing him, they, uh, uh, just before they killed him, they wanted to wash the blood off their hands. And let me say this, even now, when you read the scripture, you'll find the Bible says every time we step into sin, it's as if you're crucifying Jesus again. You can't wash him off your hands. Indeed, you can't, out, you can't, live, you can't outlive him. And you can't live without him. And I'm closing what he's saying with this. He says, Pilate found no fault in him. The witnesses didn't agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't hold him. And the grave could never keep him. I remember the scriptures which, which says in, in Acts chapter 1, 11, it's... When the angels appear and when Jesus was being ascended back up into heaven. And the angel said to, the, to the, the, the disciples who were looking up. He said, "E men of Galilee, why standing here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, this same one shall come in like manner. I'm asking the question again while I'm asking myself, are you a candidate. The scripture we read says, it says, likewise, the spirit helpeth our infirmities. Now, the word infirmities is not just speaking about uh, the physical body. That particular word is speaking about the body and also the soul, the weakness in the body and in the soul. The Holy Spirit, saints, is a counselor. The Holy Spirit in Acts, it says that he gives us power. In fact, it's Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
The Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost is our guide. The Holy Ghost reminds us. It brings back to memory. The Holy Ghost teaches us. The Holy Ghost draws us. The Holy Ghost plays fruits, fruit in us. Uh, those who are familiar with the scriptures will know in Galatians chapter 5, it speaks about the fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. But the one that really get me, and it has been getting, it really brought, it drove home to me some time ago, some, I think it was last year, is when I saw it says it's also intercedes. And this is my, the focal point of really what I'm trying to say here is that the Holy Ghost is an intercessor. When I'm thinking about COVID, or whoever is thinking about COVID, even as the whole world is on their knees, have any of us ever said, Lord, Holy Ghost, intercede? Because he's an intercessor. Who is the best intercessor to have than the Holy Ghost? That's the reason why I discovered. I remember some years ago, I was crossing the street as a young boy and I put one foot in the, in the road, didn't see the car coming over 100 miles an hour. It was a stolen vehicle and they were running away from police and the police officers were chasing them. And here I am, I didn't see. And I was putting one foot in the road. If I took another step, I would not be here today before you. You know why? Because the intercessor, the Holy Ghost, was interceding. I remember what, uh, some years ago, my mom told me that when I was four years old, I was, in, I was admitted to a hospital. Didn't look too pretty. Thought that I would have died. But here comes the intercessor. The Holy Ghost is the intercessor. Saints, we need to say to this, the Holy Ghost, intercede on as it relates to this unsaved generation. We need to say, Lord, Holy Ghost, intercede as it relates to my sick body. Even as I remember Minister Michael was preaching a few weeks ago and he was speaking about three hours Basically, in a perilous time, Holy Ghost, intercede for us, Lord. We need to appeal to the Holy Ghost to intercede in this perilous time. There are some people who have been rejected. I pray that the Holy Ghost will intercede on your behalf. There are some of us, some people who have been abused. And it's been carrying a lot of psychological issues and a lot of emotional issues and mental issues. But I hear the Holy Ghost intercede. There's somebody on my left hand side I'm speaking to. But I'm saying the Holy Ghost intercede for that person. Ah, that sister who have been at that abusive issues, that abusive relationship. Holy Ghost intercede. Ah, there is, uh, there is, there is a way to touch Jesus. There's a way to touch him. I remember the woman with the issue of blood touching, but the, she said, if I can but just touch the hem of this garment. Oh, but I say, just to touch the hem of this garment. Uh, it's not wasn't so much the physical touch, but the touch was coming straight from our spirit. It was from her spirit to his spirit. The Bible says, Jesus, he felt a virtue leaving him. Holy Ghost intercede on that person, that person who have been through an abusive relationship, an abusive experience. I hear the Spirit is saying, just like the woman with the issue of blood, are you saying just reach and touch the hem of his garment? A virtue is going to leave you because you're going to feel that strength coming into your mortal body. Uh, within no time, you're going to be wondering what's going on with my soul. It, there seems to be a strength that is coming from the spirit, strengthening my soul. In the past, I used to look on myself as if I am nothing.
nothing. But there's something in me that is saying I'm something in Christ Jesus. Oh, I feel like committing suicide. I see the tablet. Oh, I see a case of tablets. I can see the case of tablets. I can see the white label on, label on the front. And I see some white tablets in that bottle. Uh, there were times you were looking on that tablet and you're wondering, should I take these tablets? But here comes the Holy Ghost interceding on your behalf. Uh, there is a strength that comes from the Spirit. I can't touch it. Why? Because God has a plan for my life. I am closing. When I'm asking the question, are you a candidate? Which I'm posing to myself as well. It's, there are a number of things that we need to consider. One of them is, even in during this difficult and perilous time, are you a candidate who God can have confidence in to stand fast? Are you a candidate, as I spoke about the sons, are you one of those candidates whereby God can trust to use in this season of revival? Are you a candidate to take up your cross and head to Golgotha? The Bible says when Jesus was on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why art thou forsaken me? But he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When you're carrying that cross up to Golgotha, when I'm carrying it, the confidence is not in my flesh, but it's in the intercessor. I am relying. So you don't need to carry that cross and wonder, how oh, oh, are you going to do it? Don't place the trust in you, but place the trust in that Holy Ghost. Place the trust in the intercessor. Lord, I'm going to Golgotha, even as your word states in Luke 9, verse 23. But I'm not relying on myself, because if I'm relying on myself, I'll vacate the cross. But in order for you to do in me and through me what you need to do in and through me, I need to be nailed to this cross. And so, Lord, I'm relying on you. Intercessor, help me in this period. Help me in this period. Help me in this difficult time. Help me because, Lord Jesus, I know I have to deny myself. I have to, be, I have to take up this cross. But, Lord, I can't do it by myself. There's somebody on my right side. I'm not going to ask that person to stand. Neither am I going to tell it, identify anybody. I know you, who you are, but that's, I'm not going to ask you to stand. And I'm going to stand on this side while I'm speaking to that individual as well. There is a decision that you need to make as it relates to your walk with God. But in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing you one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Uh, I know some people might be saying, oh, that might be me. If that's you, you need to get back into the, into, get back into the place where you ought to be. But there is somebody specifically I'm referring to. And even I'm, as I'm speaking, this word is releasing in their soul. They're feeling a move in their soul. So to identify that, oh, yes, I am the one. 
The Lord is giving you another opportunity to make it right. The Lord is giving you another opportunity for you to step. You see, there is so much God has invested in you, but you don't really know and understand the depth of it. Why? Because you're not in the relationship that you ought to be with Christ. And so this word is coming to you. This word is coming to you, not so much as a warning, not so much as a correction, but this word is coming to you as a pull. Because the Holy Ghost is pulling, is drawing you to the place where you need to go. And God is saying, do not resist the pull. Do not resist the pull because it's from the pull you'll be launched into that which God has called you to walk into. God bless you. I'm closing. I'm just going to ask you to stand. As I'm closing. If there is anyone who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask, this is your time. Use this, use this opportunity. If there is anyone who is in a backslidden state, use this opportunity. If that person who I just spoke to you also have the opportunity to come before Christ and say, Lord, make it right. Do not have confidence in your own ability. Have confidence in God. God bless you. Amen.